speaking from the diaphragm. What does it really mean? And can using your diaphragm properly improve your weak or tired voice? In this video, I'm going to untangle some myths about diaphragmatic breathing and tell you that some interpretations of speaking from the diaphragm can actually put even more stress on your voice. Keep on watching. Hi, I am Katerina, speech language pathologist, and here on this channel I share practical tips about using your voice in a healthy way. So if this is a topic that interests you, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. The phrase speaking from the diaphragm is very misleading and in my 20 plus years of experience I have seen many people pushing more air and creating more tension in their voice when trying to speak from the diaphragm. So let's unpack this phrase and see if there are more useful instructions to improve your weak voice. In my opinion, the phrase speak from the diaphragm is very general and vague. It really doesn't give you any specific instructions that you can execute successfully and improve your voice in any way. Even if you know where the diaphragm is located, how do you actually speak from the diaphragm? What exactly do you do? What muscles do you engage? What muscles do you release? How does it feel to speak from the diaphragm? When people are asked to speak from their diaphragm, this is the usual reaction I see. What I just did is far from what healthy speaking is about. This type of breathing creates more tension, puts more strain on the vocal folds and doesn't improve vocal strength at all. That's point number one. The second point is that you cannot really control your diaphragm in isolation when speaking. Your diaphragm will move down when you inhale and will move up when you speak, whether you want it or not. Of course, you can postpone or deepen your inhalation and you can slow down or speed up your exhalation. But is this something that will strengthen your voice? I'm not quite sure where the phrase speaking from the diaphragm came from, but I know that it's the most useless phrase you can give to anyone or to receive. And you may not agree with me, but from my experience, there are far more specific and useful instructions for strengthening your voice. In fact, you most likely have enough air in your lungs for speaking unless you have an acute or chronic pulmonary condition such as COVID or COPD. When you have healthy lungs, your brain knows exactly how much air to inhale for a given spoken phrase. We rarely run out of breath when speaking. If you are running out of breath at the end of spoken phrases, it's most likely due to low vocal effort, not due to lack of air in your lungs. Or if you feel the need to push air at the end of spoken phrases, it's not because you don't have enough breath. It's more likely that your abdominals are too tight, which causes a lot of loss of air. Or if your voice is breathy and weak, it's not because you didn't inhale enough air. It's because your vocal folds are not closing properly and they are leaking air. In all of these scenarios, speaking from the diaphragm would only deepen the problem, not solve it. So let's make an experiment. Let's see how much air you really need for speaking. Inhale normally as you would normally do, then blow out air to a comfortable level and then count from one to 10. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What did you observe? Write the word easy in the comments below if you could easily count from 1 to 10 on a small breath. I personally could easily count till 10 without any strain, running out of breath or pushing air at the end. And I was able to do that from the resting expiratory level after blowing air from my lungs. This experiment shows you that you don't need more air in your lungs to have a strong voice. What you need is a better coordination of all the moving parts when speaking. In my experience, many vocal issues, including a weak voice, vocal strain, or even pain, are caused by too much breath. Large lung volumes are hard to control. Large volumes can create high breath pressures under the vocal folds, which put strain on them. When you drive too much air through the vocal folds, there are two things that can happen. Too much air can cause the folds to constrict or work extra hard to withstand the high pressures underneath them. Too much breath can cause constriction and strain in other parts of the vocal tract. Or the vocal folds just simply give up and open completely, which results in a breathy and weak voice. If you are experiencing vocal strain, tension, or even pain when speaking, and you are ready to work towards a free, strong, and confident voice, you can apply to our Vocal Freedom System coaching program. Check out the link in the description below this video. So the question is, what can you do to strengthen your weak voice? Let the diaphragm do its job. Unless you have a chronic respiratory condition, your diaphragm will work well without you paying too much attention to it. When you start interfering with the natural flow of the breathing mechanism, it often leads to discoordination. If you still don't believe me, try to speak on smaller lung, lung volumes than you usually do. So, do exactly what we did in our little experiment before saying a sentence. Blow air out and then say the sentence on a lower lung volume. <sighs> See if that makes a difference. Also, focus on the vocal folds closure. Is it too tight which causes your voice to get tired easily? Or does the vocal fold closure leak air and therefore your voice is weak and you feel breathless? Strengthen the laryngeal muscles responsible for healthy sound production. The muscles that close the vocal folds, that lengthen them and shorten them. And I made a video about strengthening your voice in which I show you easy exercises to build vocal power. You can click the link up here to watch that video. But when you are dealing with a weak voice, there are more things to consider than breath and vocal fold closure. I also made a video in which I walk you through seven steps that lead to a strong voice without tension. If you want to know what voice, body and mind considerations you need to take to truly free your voice, click the link in the description below this video. And if you found this video helpful, click the like button and share it with your friends. And check out my other videos right here below. I hope to see you soon. Bye!